Welcome to the Christian Atheist, where faith and reason fuse in the Incarnation. Episode number 81, The Year Ahead. Jenny and I are beginning a new year here at the Christian Atheist. Since 2019, I have been trying to understand the intellectual structure of both my atheism and my path back to Christ, which necessarily involved an analysis of our sociocultural world. We have ranged over history, philosophy, psychology, ethics, theology, literature, and science. Almost anything that might challenge us to think more clearly and systematically about faith in God. We have analyzed atheism, both creedal and practical, and what it means to have faith and evidence. In practice, these three years have been a philosophical exercise in introspection, which comes naturally and easily for me. As Jenny said to me earlier this year, however, it is time for something more. Marx complained of Hegel and all previous philosophy that it was only the attempt to understand the world, while the real point is to change it. As much as it pains me to agree with Karl Marx on anything, he is right that, as Christians, it is insufficient to simply understand. We must act. Creedal faith is not enough. Even the demons believe. God wants the whole person. It was no mistake that I constantly referred to Socrates' claim that if you really want to know what someone believes, watch what they do. Don't listen to what they say. Real faith is always embodied. Another of the fundamental lessons from the Incarnation, our foundation stone here at The Christian Atheist. Jenny and I started the No Compromise podcast to try to aid understanding, to bring light to our ever-darkening world today. But light calls us to action. The Church, I fear, has been in progressive retreat for the last two centuries, compromising away its commitment to truth, its rational faith in God, acting as if science and the modern world had successfully undermined Christianity, withdrawing into our churches and surrounding ourselves with like-minded believers. We've allowed ourselves to become milk toast. Gentle Jesus, meek and mild adherents, who are utterly inoffensive, kind, and weak. We have compromised away the radical message of the gospel. I fear because we no longer believe it ourselves. As I said in the final episode of our Machinery of the Looking Glass series, the faith I returned to is less settled, more complex and nuanced, less tortured, more imbued with uncertainty, ambiguity, paradox. It is more robust, stronger now, but no longer simple. It remains foolishness for those who do not believe. I will be, happily now, a fool for Christ. So bring on the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, the honest doubts, and the malicious attacks. This is the hill on which I die. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I think it is time to stop retreating, to stop compromising. It is time to take the battle to the enemy and stop cowering inside our gated communes. Science, philosophy, history, all are on our side in this social and spiritual war. God wants all of us. And all of us. We are not our own. We've been bought with a price. Our freedom has cost our Redeemer his life. If we truly love him, we will unreservedly offer ourselves, body, mind, and soul, to his service. When the apostles began to spread the gospel, they had only eyewitness accounts of the resurrection on which to stand. We have the entire history of the church the New Testament scriptures, the amazing discoveries of science, and the success of the Western world testifying to the truth of the good news. We've had 2,000 years to contemplate the wonders of divine law and grace in Christ, to think clearly and systematically about faith, reason, and divinity. And the case is stronger now than it has ever been, not weaker, 
as our Hegelian culture has propagandized us to believe. As we ended last season of The Christian Atheist with a series of interviews, we would like to expand this external interaction this year, God willing. I do not consider myself great at thinking on my feet, but in spite of my feelings of inadequacy on this point, I would like to offer myself as a debater on the topics of atheism and theism, against whomever. One of our listeners said to me last year that he would, quote, pay big money to see me debate two renowned atheists. I don't remember their names. I couldn't find this post anywhere, where I would report the interchange more exactly. Remember, I have been off the scene of these debates for many years. I don't know the names of the players or the arguments that are currently in vogue on either side of the discussion. Perhaps this is a strength and not a weakness. Jenny thinks so, and she is by far the brightest bulb in this closet. I can honestly say, though, that I do not fear such discussions as I did in my early Christian life. I have nothing to prove, and I don't think God needs me to defend him, but only to point to the truth and the way. I've looked carefully at both sides, and there's a pretty clear winner, rationally speaking. I also believe that honest atheism, sincere questioning, is a reliable path to God even if it is seldom traveled. Next, we plan on a different approach to the podcast this year. As I said earlier, we've been concentrating on understanding, on the theoretical. As a philosopher, this is what I do, and I'm not sure I can do much else that would be beneficial for our listeners. But as Jenny and I have brainstormed the future, we thought that perhaps a good start in a new direction would be the integration of the three podcasts that constitute our broader vision of God's purpose for us. Our Simple Gifts podcast is dedicated to familiarizing listeners with the best literature and thought of the Western tradition, the stuff our schools no longer teach, which is part of the strategy of dumbing down the populace so that it can be effectively controlled. This year, we want to integrate Simple Gifts with the Christian Atheist, and no compromise. I don't think that apologetics, at least as it is currently conceived and practiced, is a great strategy for rolling back our atheistic culture. But knowledge and understanding is, as Proverbs tells us. We begin this year, therefore, by together exploring C.S. Lewis's lesser-known essays, with a Christian atheist twist each week. We hope to equip believers to understand their faith to live their faith, to increase their faith through God's gift of rationality. On Mondays, therefore, I will present my musings on one of Lewis's essays we've recorded for Simple Gifts, and on Thursdays Jenny and I will discuss it at greater length and depth. Our strategy is simple. To know God is to love Him. To love Him is to serve Him. Our motto this year with our transcendent God, being, truth, and value, there can be no compromise. I am a Christian with the searching and skeptical mind of an atheist. I don't want to believe anything that isn't true. I know both sides of the looking glass and I know them with open eyes. I choose Christ's side. I invite you to join me from wherever you stand before the looking glass. That's this week's episode. Thanks for listening. And remember, you can have your religious cake and eat it too. You can have reason, respect for science, a 21st century worldview, and be a Christian. <laughs>